Hey everybody, this is Ori from Circuit, and I'm going to walk you through the Google Search Console, or previously known as Google Webmaster Tools. Okay, perfect. So uh, before we actually go into a, the Search Console, I would like to explain what, what is a Google Search Console. So basically, uh, if you own a website or you run a website, um, if you would like to know more about how Google sees your website, you need to register with the Search Console. Basically, this tool is a free tool which you just confirm your own domain, your website, and it'll give you some data about your website, about how Google sees your website, um, positive things, say reporting, negative things, problems, you'll, you'll get uh, notifications, things like that, okay? So let's actually step in. So um, basically, if you don't have one set up already, you're basically going to go to google.com slash webmasters and click on add a property and you're going to type in your actual uh, website okay so let's just type in some kind of example okay yahoo.com <laughs> okay um, now I'm not going to confirm it right now that'll be a different video but I'll at least explain what you actually need, need to do okay so once you actually set up a new property or a new website you need to actually confirm that you are the owner or you have control over the website. If you don't, then of course Google is not going to share you uh, its own data about someone else's business or someone else's website. Okay, so you basically have two different ways of verifying it. One is by the recommended method. <coughs> Excuse me, which is uh, downloading a file, putting it on the server, and then enabling. Google to actually access that to verify that you have control over the website or other uh, alternative methods for example changing some DNS settings or connecting your already uh, Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics or adding some kind of HTML tag to your page. Okay, So once you actually let's go back here once you actually have verified one let's actually go to an example right here let's go here and let's click on one specific property okay Now, um, when you actually go to the dashboard, you'll be able to see some uh, information right here, okay? So one of the most important things that uh, Google Search Console actually has is it'll alert you if there's some kind of really major, major changes. You're going to receive both an email and messages in the beginning, such as your website cannot be read, uh, you have too many errors, um, your website is hacked, things like that. So the, the first thing is receiving messages to the email that has confirmed this account on some kind of major issue, okay? That's the first thing. So if I click on messages, I'll be able to see all my messages, I can delete them, I can view them, etc. Okay? Perfect, okay? So now if we go back to the dashboard, we'll be able to see some initial information. So current status, some information about your crawl errors, you can see our DNS issues. We don't have any DNS issues. We don't have server connectivity issues. And the robots.txt is fine. And you can see uh, more about your organic search or the search analytics within clicks and keywords that you actually get traffic from organically. Not Google Ads, but actually Google Organic, okay? Next, you'll be able to see more information about your sitemaps, and then you can click and it'll take you to the specific pages. Okay, perfect. Okay, so one more thing is you can al always go to the settings here and you can also add new users to manage and to access um, and you can change some of the settings, but these are very, very basic settings, so there's really not too much to uh, go over right now. Um, so let's just quick, uh, click uh, pretty quickly. Um, you can have a uh, turn on email notifications. You can configure uh, if you want to have a, per a preferred domain or let Google uh, find it out for you. Um, you can change the crawl rate. So but by default, you probably don't want to change this. But if you do have specific requirements, you can do and, and use this. OK, um, let's go here. OK, change of address, of course. If you do actually um, are redirecting from one domain to the other, what you would basically have to do is go to Search Console and add a new property for the, the new address and the old one and then follow the steps and actually do 301 redirects, etc. But this is a, a much less common 
uh, thing. It's only if you are actually changing to a new domain, okay? Uh, Google Analytics property. Um, okay, which property uh, have you shared? So you typically want to connect Google Analytics and Google uh, Search Console together. And of course, if you have ad AdWords, you want to connect that as well. But within this Google Analytics property, you'll actually be able to connect between the two. So the more you connect, the more data gets shared between Analytics and Search Console, okay? Um, and the verification details, which we showed when you add a new uh, property, and that's it, okay? Perfect. So let's actually start going in one by one by one, okay? So Search Appearance, okay? So. Here, um, you'll basically be able to see some additional information about how Google recognizes your pages, your HTML, and what it actually displays with it. So the first one, which is, is structured data. So if your website, if your HTML is actually coded correctly, certain tags, excuse me, current, uh, coded correctly, certain tags, uh, for example, schema.org tag, so highlighting, maybe a business name or an author or a review if you actually did that in a correct way you'll be able to see that google recognizes your structured data so really in short what that means is uh, in addition to just coding the website google wants to understand the different parts of the website to understand if a certain part is just a description an image uh, a review a name uh, things like that so if you go to actually uh, schema.org you'll be able to see certain HTML standards that will enable you to specify what an address is what a business is all these different elements and if Google can read your website in a much more clear way you have the option to um, be able to explain to the search engines and actually get ranking and get get the, the search engines to understand what you're actually uh, about what your website is about and of course you can benefit from that from SEO search engine optimization and more traffic and more rankings and things like that okay so here you'll be, be able to see all of the different data types that uh, the search engines have recognized okay so if you use uh, things like WordPress or certain extensions you'll be able to actually get those recognized easily and if not you'll actually have to modify your code but this is a uh, a different video uh, not for this one but you can just go to schema.org and understand a little bit better about that so it's either structured data you can type in into Google or schema.org okay next one okay so rich cards this is a mention if uh, you actually have additional enhancements to your results okay so for example if I type in let's say I'm just searching for Yahoo Okay, if you notice on the right hand side, there's a box here and the, this box will sometimes add more information about your business or other references that Google has found across the web. So in short, if you have a specific structured data that you can actually have in your search results when people search for your event or your business name or certain products of yours, you can actually have additional enhancements. Okay, so here, um, in this case, we did not find any, right? Google did not find any, but you can actually go and enhance your code to get better chance to get things like this and other, other related uh, rich cards. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, basically a data highlighter. So all of these structured data, rich cards, and data hi highlighter are all very similar and very closely related. Okay, so as we mentioned before, in order to get structured data or to get more about rich cards, you actually have to provide your data in a certain way in HTML to specify this is an address, this is a name, this is a review, this is a price, this is etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, if you don't want to do it in code, you can actually use the data highlighter to basically load your website and highlight, just mark with your mouse certain elements and specify to Google if it is a price, address, business name, etc, etc, which is an uh, interesting tool. Typically, or excuse me, all the time we do it in HTML, but you also have the option to do that here and just follow the steps. It's just a, a simple tool. It'll load your page and you can actually do that. Okay, so here in the example here, this is a good thing we have an image. Um, so in a typically, okay, this is just a regular result page, right? So, 
a so you have the title tag or the name the URL and the meta description right so what is actual structured data to show you a little bit more are more enhancements on the results for example right here you can see rating reviews and you can see uh, events and things like that so that that's what, basically what structured data is if you are able to highlight your data in a certain way you you have the option for Google to understand better to benefit from it and potentially to actually change your results to show more information okay so for example these are site links right and um, you can see Twitter has other posts here so not every single result uh, actually has the same type of mentions or same type of text okay perfect so let's go on to the next one okay HTML improvements okay so um, because Google or Google bot is actually crawling your website it's crawling page by page by page till it understands what your website is about and of course it continues to actually you know scan your page and revisit etc so what it'll actually do is it actually provide you some suggested improvements based on meta description, title tag, etc., um, non and non-indexable content. Okay. So basically, if you have duplicate meta descriptions, maybe you have certain pages you haven't filled them out or haven't filled out the title tag, or they're too long or too short, it'll actually specify that. And if there are any pages, you can actually click and see more information about what page and then what the actual data is right here okay please note for this example we're using a Taiwan site so some of the text you'll see is in Mandarin um, but a uh, this is just the example itself okay perfect next one site links so as you met as you uh, saw before you'll have a mention if you do have site links so again what we saw when we searched for Yahoo these are site links site link one two three four five now these site links are basically decided by Google so you don't really have too much influence directly, but based on how your site structure is and your interlinking is, you have you can actually try to help influence this. Now, if for example um, you do have one site link, so let's say this one that you definitely do not want to be uh, indexed when someone searches for your business name, what you would do actually is use this tool to demote it to actually request to remove this one for example okay so basically you'd click on the URL let's say right here just copy this and then use the tool to actually specify and click on demo okay perfect okay next one accelerated mobile pages or AMP um, basically this is a fairly new addition um, and this is a way for you to um, code your website to make your mobile pages super fast, very, very fast, very speedy. You have to modify the way you code your website. Um, in this case, we don't have any uh, association to it, but here you'll be able to actually read more about it and understand if Google has actually uh, read that and actually providing it, and you'll have some additional data uh, for, for uh, the AMP pages. Okay, great. Now, let's go to search traffic. Okay, so this is uh, kind of one of the more important things for SEO. And basically, you're going to receive, based on your time right here, you're basically going to receive a graph and information about the keywords that are ranking and clicked. Okay, so by, by default, you want, you want to actually, uh, you, by default, you can only see clicks uh, checkbox right here. But you basically want to add more information right here to actually see how certain ranking positions affect click-through rate, affect clicks and impressions, etc. So ba based on this, you can actually understand which keywords you're ranking for and which ones you need to improve, things like that, okay? So for example, this one, Illustrator uh, keyword is actually ranked number seven and it's getting a good amount of click-through rate. So maybe by uh, improving that to ranking five or working on that from an SEO sp perspective, you can get a lot, a lot more, okay? Um, so this is very, very helpful to use this to be able to also filter by certain pages or filter by certain countries and devices. This is a very good tool right here which you can use. Um, and it gives you an idea because it, Google Analytics doesn't necessarily give you all of the keyword data. 
um, you have to kind of uh, do a few different things to do that. So Search Console is a great way to understand your keyword data better. Okay, so let's actually, okay, perfect. Um, and so uh, let's move on to the next one, okay? So links to your site. Okay, so now um, because Google crawls the, the entire web, it'll actually be able to specify uh, which domains and how many pages have actually linked to your site and of course uh, one of the traditional things for SEO is to get valuable links valuable domains and articles to actually link to you so here you'll be able to actually see more information about the domains you'll be able to download them in CSV and actually understand who's linking to you and if you actually click on a specific domain then you'll be able to actually see which uh, the domain and which pages they actually link to okay so you'll be able to download more information here and ac actually see who's linking to you and maybe uh, enhance some more partnerships and just be able to track more about what the web is talking about you okay this is very valuable for SEO okay and here you can actually see what the most linked to content is on your website so that'll also be able to help you understand for your ep efforts if the pages you're interested are actually getting linked to okay and here these are the actual anchor text the actual text links that link or the most popular ones that actually link to you okay so for example astro web magento etc okay next one is a, a report for internal links how what are the most popular pages that get linked to from inside the website so only from your domain and you can actually understand which pages are more popular so of course the most popular one in this case is uh, linking back to the home page because every single place every single page on your website always has a link back to the home page okay um, let's go to the next one okay and of course most of these um, reports you can actually download uh, to CSV okay Next one, manual actions. If you do have a penalty from a search engine perspective and not an automatic a, a penalty, but you actually have a manual web spam, so you did something most likely very, very bad, you'll be able to see some addition here. And if you do have an issue, you'll be able to actually follow steps and request a reconsideration request, basically ask to be re-index or remove your penalty but you of course you have to fix all of the things that you uh, were suspected of doing okay next one um, this, now um, Google will sp specify if it understands if it knows what website language and what country you are it'll be able to actually specify um, what it uh, understands your website is so if you use the href language tag in your HTML it'll understand in this case we don't have anything now country um, it'll be able to understand that in most cases and in this case you can see that it understood that it is Taiwan which is correct in this case because we have a .com.tw website okay perfect next one mobile usability here it'll actually specify what are the problems that are not that are making your website not mobile friendly okay so for example there's one issue on one page that we our text is too small to read so typically in this case um, it'll actually show you more about your mobile usability now this is very important because as you know more and more users are using mobile in many many industries mobile is growing to you know 50 percent or more of your traffic it really depends on your business but everybody sees the trend of more and more mobile users so this is a great great tool to use okay go on to the next one okay so index status so this is basically a list of all of the pages the number of pages by date that Google has indexed right so Google if you actually search for your let's go to google.com if you actually do a site colon and your domain name so okay you'll be able to see the number of pages that have been indexed so this and this is only from our domain right so um, this is will be able to show you how Google has understood how many pages you have on your website okay um, and this is very important to understand if you have some issues or if your new pages or your new section or your new blog has been indexed okay 
Next one, content keywords. Um, this report will allow you to see what are your most popular terms on your website from a whole, from all of your pages, from the entire website itself to understand what is the main topics, what are the main terms that are mentioned across the entire website, okay? Perfect. Block resources. This will be a list of all of the robot.txt or the uh, meta robots that you have actually specified for Googlebot not to read. So for example, if you have a WordPress site, it's really common to block Google from uh, reading your admin files or things like that, your admin folder, excuse me. So here you'll be able to see all of the block resources. In this case, just our live chat is being blocked. Uh, Zopin, which is an external third party live chat uh, plugin. So in this case, we have no problem. You'll be able to see spikes and kind of understand uh, if, if this is good for you or not. Okay, perfect. Next one. If you do have a request to remove a URL from indexation from the search results, here's where you can actually request them, okay? Um, now, in this case, you, you probably first want to remove them from your actual website or your content management system and then request it, but here you'll be able to actually remove it, okay? Perfect. Let's go on to the next one, which is crawl. This is also a very, very important tool, a tool crawl errors. Here you'll be able to see if you had any issues in the last 90 days for DNS, for server, for robots.txt. And you can actually use the, excuse me, the tabs for desktop smartphone and, and actual phone to be able to see the issues. So by default, you're looking at server errors. You've seen we've had some errors, they were fixed, and now we've been good for a while, right? And here would be a list of all of your errors. Now, this is a very, very helpful one, which is the not found tab, which basically shows you four or four errors that the, the Google bot or Google has read while visiting page by page by page by page. So this one you definitely want to fix. And you can sort by when it was detected and you can actually click on specific ones. So let's click on this. And if you click on that, you, you can see that Google saw uh, the first time is last year or excuse me, almost two years ago, the first time it detected an issue with this page and the last time it detected this issue. And then if you see, click on the link from, you'll be able to see how did they actually get to this page to find the error. They got it from all of these pages. Okay, perfect. Once you fix it on the website, you click on mark as fixed. And if it's fixed and Google never receives this 404, it would not go back into the list. If you clicked on mark this fixed, but a week later, Google visited that page with the same error, it'll place it back. Okay, so this is a very, very helpful uh, tool to actually use and fix. Okay, next one. Crawl stats. Okay, so this will basically gives you some graphs of how many pages, how much a actual space, kilobytes downloaded per day, and actually how much time. So you'll be able to see a quick overview of how Google is reading your pages. So for example, if you just redirected your website or you made a new website, you'll be able to see a huge spike. And this will just a quick overview to see if everything looks correct, especially the time downloaded and the number of pages crawled, okay? Uh, fetches Google. This is a tool for you to kind of debug and, and see what's going on. So basically you can specify within your domain a certain page and actually see how Google uh, sees that page, okay? If you have issues, if it can download it correctly, if it's blocked or not, okay? Um, so let's just say, let's view the home page only. So I'm not gonna enter anything here and I can click on fetch and render. Now it'll pen, it'll be working and it usually takes about a minute or so. And once you do that, you'll be able to, let's click on an example here and you'll be able to see the HTML that was uh, actually downloaded. And if you clicked on render, you'll be able to actually see, here's the download time, the actual image of how Google sees your page, how Googlebot sees your page versus, you know, how you see the page, right? So you basically want what Googlebot sees as your page to be the same thing that your users see. You don't want to have something different for them, okay? Okay, let's get back to this um, if we have a, 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 another minute later, okay? So next one, robots.txt. So robots.txt tester is basically showing you the last time that 
Google read your robots.txt and what the actual data is right there, okay? So, basically, um, here you'll be able to use this tool to actually test certain changes. And what you can do is you can specify some information in your robots.txt and then specify um, a URL to test if you, did, if you did the configuration correctly. So for example, that you're not blocking certain pages that shouldn't be blocked, things like that. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the next one, sitemap. Okay, now, uh, of course you want Google to always read all of your pages. So one of the reasons, or one of the ways you actually uh, do that is you actually submit a sitemap, okay? So how do you uh, submit a sitemap? First you have to create one, okay? So for example, this is our sitemap. Now it's just an XML that has just detail about all of the pages, okay? So one by one by one. Now how do you do that? Depending on what platform you have, you can actually make an extension or it might be built into your platform. So for example, Magento has a built-in one, okay? Now, um, basically, you can also go to Sitemap XML, which is a free sitemap generator, um, and it, it allows you to actually put in your uh, domain and it actually create a sitemap for you. You save it, you put it on your website, and then you actually submit it, okay? So you would actually submit a new website right here, okay? So in this case, I would do sitemap.xml. I would upload it first to the root directory, click on submit. Once you have that, you'll be able to actually see a comparison between what you submitted and what was indexed right here, which is pretty, pretty similar in this case. How many warnings, how many issues do I have? And I can kind of work on that, okay? And here are all my issues and here are the reasons why, okay? I had a 404 error, maybe this was redirected or this is not correct, etc. Okay, so I'm gonna fix those and then go back and resubmit. Okay, perfect. Okay, so URL parameters. So um, basically URLs sometimes have different types of uh, parameters at the end. For example, question mark, Q equals, you know, test, things like that. So typically anything that has a question mark, something equals something, um, those are what we call dynamic uh, parameters. And uh, not always Google understands what the difference between a real dynamic page and a, just a, a duplicate page or um, things like that. So anytime you have dynamic parameters, if you think Google does not understand some of your parameters correctly, you may want to actually help configure those and help Google out. And again, typically if you don't know what you're doing, um, do not play with this. This could really change the way Google understands your website and actually uh, places your data in the search results. Okay, next. Okay, next one are security issues. Um, if you've been hacked, you will receive an email and you will receive some data here in the security issues. This is also a very, very important thing and you definitely wanna keep your website secure without malware or ads or whatever kind of hacked information, okay? So here is a very important tool. If you have nothing, they should look like that. Okay, um, that's basically it. This is an overview of Google Search Console, uh, what's going on, and let's actually go one more time to the fetch that's Google, see if it actually finished, okay? So we did the render right here. Um, let's actually click here, and now we can see how Googlebot saw the page in comparison to how a visitor would see, and you can see they're basically identical, so everything is good, and you know Google could actually fetch this page. Now. If you actually uh, want to, for example, submit to the index, maybe it's a new page that was problematic or you were testing out or you did some fix, you can also submit it to index. But uh, what we basically do is just make sure that that page can be found online and just let Google revisit it next time by itself. Okay, so if you have any more questions, any specific detail I didn't talk about, please ask me on the comments, contact me, I'll be happy to help and we can go in more and more detail. And if you have any other videos you would like to uh, get or like for us to create, I'd be happy to do that about Search Console or any other suggestions. And if I know how to do that or if our team knows how to do that, we'll try to create it for you. Uh, thank you very much.